Okay, I'm, I'm pre-rolling. So we should be speak up. That's what I'm doing. So, yesterday, Chuck and his wife came in from, of all things, Waco. I'm pretty shocked about that. He drives, what, five hours all the way up here? Talks to us for 90 minutes and then drives back. That's a person that's passionate about their work. And frankly, I love his work. I had mentioned, you remember, I've worked with a lot of photographers. We have CA back in the corner, and he's not a photographer in my assessment. He actually is an artist, and his vehicle for communicating his art is his photography. I think that that's pretty cool. And I wish I had written down some stuff, so I'm hoping you guys can help me out. I need to get a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper. But one of the things that I liked what he said was, if you are not, and help me out on this quote, if you are not uncomfortable, you're not winning. You remember him saying that? Was mm -hmm. that exactly it? Or it's not something to do with risk. If you're not taking, if you're not taking a risk, that's right. If you're not taking a risk, you're not winning. I thought that that was fabulous. Anyway, Kat, you and I were talking earlier. You had something you thought of. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of the what he, um, a lot of the models that he uh, takes photographs of is exclusively women. And one of the things he said was the subject ranges from ages six to 106. And like the message he wants to convey with all these women is he wants to capture a beauty that they wouldn't have necessarily seen within themselves, whether it's like empowerment or when just like, just like have fun and like be able to like, um, just, just be able to like be themselves without being right. like formal. Yeah. Because a lot of these women, he says, don't have a very like high image of themselves and whenever he shoots he just shoots like usually like very little men and like whenever he does they're always like it's always like really professionally shot and when they see themselves like that it like really helps with whatever they're dealing with. Right. You notice that the it's two ends of the coin really like with Jody Swanson when Jody spoke her imagery is raw and she talks about the inner beauty, so to speak, of these women that have had challenges in their lives. But he's doing the exact same thing. Because like we talked about before, all of us want to be somewhat presentable, right? We take a shower, we comb our hair. Well, most of us comb our hair. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many different ways that you can go about trying to raise your self-esteem. And this is a unique way that they have found as a couple to really help people do that very thing, especially, especially women, not exclusively, because we did see a few images right. that he worked, he would work with men, but that they have found this kind of, I would say, mission yes. of going about it um, in a way that nobody else necessarily could. It adds just one more way that we can kind of think about how someone could raise their self-esteem. And their backstory has molded them to who they are. Wasn't it remarkable? And I gotta be I gotta be honest with you. I'm happy I'm not married to her. She has got <laughs> more knowledge. She's got a motivated memory. I just I thought, oh my word. It scared the heck out of me. <laughs> Poor Chuck. Did you say yesterday that you would have never won an argument? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> With some of you others, guys. Um, my favorite aspect of this talked about how when it comes to any profession, there's more to it than just being the best. Like, you got to find what you like, and if, that, if what you like takes you out of your comfort zone, like, Basically saying like how he just used to do a bikini model. He said how he just he absolutely hated it. Yeah. And how it didn't make him progress at all because it was just the same thing over and over again. But when he went to when he did something that he wanted to do and he took a chance at steampunk, it basically changed his life because it's something he wanted to do. He did 
puts him out there and challenges him to do better. And it's kind of like how you said, like, anything that you do with Southwest is not improving you right. at all. Right. Anything that doesn't take you out of your comfort zone is not going to improve you anywhere. And that's what I really like, just how you not only do you have to do something that you want to do, but is that thing going to make you bloom, basically? Right. And we talked about his friend that is a hummingbird photographer. And his friend imparted on him that wisdom that you have to find your niche and your passion. And that's why he decided to take that risk and go up to Wisconsin, I think it was. Yes. That steampunk convention. Can you imagine that in Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> Steven, 
but I suspect <laughs> 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 but I don't think even when you're old and decrepit and somebody's feeding you oatmeal you'll probably still remember Chuck Coleman don't you think? Yeah. If you still have your memory left. <laughs> Logan, you had some thoughts, didn't you, about this? This whole shoot and him coming in? What was your favorite piece? I mean, not, I'm not saying I didn't like any of the steampunk stuff. I really thought that stuff was, to me, it was beyond unique. Like, um, I really did like the one where it hit, um, where his wife was on the motorcycle out in the desert. It wasn't the one that was on his shirt right. when Harry came here, but I don't know. Was, I like that one, but I also did like that uh, Victorian piece he shot with that one that were only like 10 years old. Yeah, yeah, he was like 10 or 9, and I was like, I don't know, like, you know, it's not his normal or right. what his passion was, but you could still tell he had his vision put on the shoot, even though it might have not been seen on the Right, right. In fact, I think the gal on the motorcycle was Miss Colorado. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Colorado. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Anybody else think of something? I, I thought it was funny when his wife walked in and she kind of walked past us. So all the face on her legs was like, yeah, was that her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this is me. I was like, yeah, it's really something interesting. I didn't mention it, but I know it's on the other side of the legging. There's a little bit of a map. And that's actually from a steampunk book I read called The Young Life and Trilogy by, um, I think it's Scott Westerfield, Westerfield. But yeah, I just know, I just know I'm looking at that. It's literally from a book from, um, from, I guess, the, um, young adult novel. And I just like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's just like, they are really <laughs> I like looking at staging, both in film and also in this case photography the staging was absolutely fabulous because I've, I've done that I've, I did a shoot one time in Dallas a food shot that took eight hours and I had somebody actually scout throughout Texas get what we needed and then stage that before we shot the food is concentration on the, all these little details remember the gal with the white top hat and how he walked through the different parts of her costuming or that Goodwill thing that was bought two hours before that was red and they shot it in that cavern. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff really impresses me because those kinds of details, those kinds of props can really enhance. And remember, we're talking, especially if you notice about storytelling, one shot that tells a story. And was it you, Nate, that was talking before we started filming about it? What was that you said? Um, one of the things uh, Chuck said was like, a story can be freeze framed, but you lose so much of it. So your first impression of a photo isn't gonna be the same as a video. And learning, and even down to a live photo that has just a small amount of movement is gonna tell more of a story than a single freeze frame moment. Um, and it can speak to kind of where this generation is moving that we can put everything into movement nowadays. Like even the photo shoots he all had completely recorded. He had our conversations recorded. Uh, everything we need because he wants that story because that's what makes a photo almost come alive. Knowing like the emotion behind it is going to make right. it more powerful than just seeing a picture of a lady with uh, leggings on her face. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. In printmaking, particularly in painting, and also in photography, a still photograph providing a title that gives a hint of the story can guide the viewer. I will also say, going back to what you mentioned with the setup and finding costumes, he removed a lot of obstacles in my mind because he was saying, you know, this costs five dollars. We this is actually just a sheet that, that we cut up and put in. And all of a sudden you start thinking, well, okay, something that looks like thousands and thousands of dollars were spent on it, 
was thrift store goodwill finds. Right. And it's what the person did with these very cheap, inexpensive, readily enable materials that made it special rather than, and they did have some designer dresses as well, but quite honestly, it's very difficult for me to be able to say, yeah, that one is a designer dress and that one was bought at Goodwill. Right. I was wondering where, what Goodwill are they getting that dress from? <laughs> 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 okay, there's a bunch of that. 80s prom dresses at our Goodwill. Well, it's amazing that you can take a, an outfit that is thousands and thousands of dollars to make it look beautiful or take anything he has and make it look beautiful as well. I mean, that, that's true craftsmanship. Yeah. To be able to basically take anything and, and stylize it into his style, regardless of where he got it or, or what it is. The other thing that we didn't talk about, but I had to work with a lot of models through the years. And if it's not a professional model, sometimes the art direction is very wearing. And he has a lot of shoots in here where these are not professional models. So he's making some kind of connection with them that allows them to be relaxed. Whether it be that nine-year-old child, or do you remember the black-haired gal that was 51 years old that was an attorney? You look at that the way she how comfortable she is with her hair and her arm, you're thinking, are you sure that must be a professional model? Well, I even wanted to ask him, what do you say? How do you put a person at ease? But he it kind of answered that question through his presentation by just how personable he is yes. as a human being. He automatically puts you at ease. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he even thinks about it. It just it happens. Just comes. I mean, with that attorney, she came in with a dress. She said, I want you to shoot me. He throws her a corset, she puts it on, they have a shot, just like that. Yeah, I was really nervous going into that room because I wanted to ask a lot of questions, but it was also like, oh, I'm asking questions to this guy who's like super famous. And then I saw his wife and I was like, oh my God. You know? <laughs> she kind of stood out in our school because she's so gorgeous. And so I was feeling overwhelmed, but when he started talking, it seemed like I was immediately starting to feel more comfortable, almost like I'd known him for a while. Yes. So I think he has a talent of connecting with people. Hang on right there, I just got a phone call, so let me make sure this is still recording. Okay. We'll just have a little break there. Okay, we're good. What you said earlier, I love the dynamics of the couple. I, I mean, he walked in and the first thing he says is, I'm an old man, don't ask me how I, you know, and all of a sudden all barriers drop. But the dynamic here, he's got all of this energy and he's all over the place. And she's quiet and reserved sitting there, kind of keeping an eye on it. Kind of like, yeah, <laughs> saying, okay. And, and I just love that. And he had these really, you know, she has a very like sexy stare, right? When she does her mom, like, right? it would come up and he'd go, "That's my cupcake." You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, romantic. I thought it was interesting when when you had said beforehand that his wife was a model. I was thinking, oh, they must have met at a shoot, and they come up with this huge, like, amazing story about how they met and how they, you know, love each other. I was like, that was not. That's a real love story. I wrote a note to my sister-in-law um, because she's up in Chicago because she's helping a whole bunch of people constantly, constantly putting herself out, people in her house and not. And I wrote the note, her birthday was two days ago, and I said, happy birthday. Thank goodness you were born because you have contributed to the world being And I, I think I can say that for this couple. I'm a better person for having met them. So we need to have them back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, need to, we need to share them with some other people. Yeah. I was I was super impressed with the way you communicated 
and his desire to help all of you and talk about his work and talk about his share his story. I mean, he's he's somebody who he, he's done a lot of a, a lot of fantastic work work with some of the top top models, some of the top people in the industry, and yet he comes to Oklahoma Christian to talk to us out of all people. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things. Um, even though he was one of these top photographers, he still had those good moral values that he had with us. So that was good. Yeah. He makes it, uh, I just like how he makes you feel safe and respected, especially when he's just talking about how, like, in his original shoot for, I guess the woman that he was originally working for was just... The squeeze guy. Yes, that's the correct term for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, close <laughs> 